Hello horror fans, I'm Antonia Carlotta and you're in for another thrilling episode of Universally Me. And today we're talking about one of the unsung heroes of the Universal Monster Classics, the charming and talented David Manners. I'm also really eager to discuss a very important rumor, why his star was removed from the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But you're going to have to wait till the end to find that out, because today we're starting at the beginning. David Joseph Manners was born Ralph de Ryther Duan Acklam. Wasn't expecting that one. He was born April 30th, 1900 in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He was the younger child and only son of Lillian Manners and George Moresby Acklam, and he's a distant relative of Princess Diana. Ralph and his family immigrated to Mount Vernon in New York when he was eight years old. And for a time, it seemed he was gonna follow in his father's footsteps as an editor and publisher. But his life took a turn when he moved back to Canada to study forestry at the University of Toronto. Forestry, it turned out, bored him, but it did lead to his introduction to the stage. He'd been in one play before, a high school production of The Tempest when he was 16, but at the University of Toronto, he got more involved and he made his acting debut at the Hart House Theater in 1924 in Hippolytus. His father was not on board with the whole acting thing. I assume he thought it was an unreliable way to make a living. But that didn't stop him. He dropped out of college just a few months shy of graduation and moved back to the United States where he quickly picked up work in New York, Chicago, and performing in touring companies. In 1927, he moved to California to pursue a career in film. Now this is where James Whale comes in and changes his life. Actually, I'm not exactly sure when Ralph Acklam started going by David Manners. I know he didn't officially change his name until 1940, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna call him David Manners starting now. In 1930, David Manners goes to a party in Hollywood and he meets James Whale. And I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but though David Manners had just married Suzanne Bushnell the year before, he was gay and he and Suzanne would divorce in 1932. The reason I bring this up is because I can't help but wonder if David Manners was in any way out when he met James Whale. James Whale was openly gay, which was a rarity in old Hollywood. And though David Manners was never openly gay to the public, James Whale was known for working with other gay artists. And I can't help but wonder if that was something they quietly bonded over when James Whale took a shine to him and cast David Manners in his upcoming film, Journey's End. Either way, Journey's End was David Manners' first credited role in Hollywood and it launched his career. The role that he's most strongly associated with now, definitely the one that I most identify him with, and I think many of you too, given our subject matter expertise, is that of Jonathan Harker in 1931's Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. Unfortunately, I've never found this performance too captivating. Like, he's perfectly good in it, but maybe at times a little boring or stiff. Funny enough, he claimed to have never seen Dracula his entire life, even though he would receive fan mail for it the rest of his life. In 1932, he played a very similar role in The Mummy with Boris Karloff. And then in 1934, he played another similar role in The Black Cat, opposite both Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff. These roles are a big reason why so many of us know David Manners today. Though he never played a horror role, per se, he'll forever be associated with these horror movies. I think back to videos that I've made on Dracula or The Mummy or The Black Cat, I probably hardly mention David Manners. And it's not because he's bad, it's just because how could he hold a flame to Boris and Bela? David Manners became a popular romantic lead for a few years, acting opposite some of the biggest names in Hollywood. But despite his popularity at the time, perhaps because he was acting opposite such big names, his name sort of fades into the background of history. He was in Miracle Woman, opposite Barbara Stanwyck, A Bill of Divorcement with Katharine Hepburn and John Barrymore, and Man Wanted, opposite Kay Francis. He was in almost 40 films between 1930 and 1936. Despite his success, David Manners was growing frustrated in Hollywood. He wasn't feeling fulfilled by his roles and he just couldn't connect to Hollywood, which he considered inauthentic. He decided to leave Hollywood behind and turned his aspirations to writing instead. He fled to Yucca Loma Ranch in Apple Valley and began writing a newspaper column called Under the Old Yucca Tree, 
which ran weekly from 1938 to 1942. He published his first novel, Convenient Season, in 1941, and his follow-up, Under Running Laughter, in 1943. I really want to highlight this time at the newspaper because it's hard to find much on David Manners. He wasn't much for giving interviews, and after he left Hollywood, he distanced himself from the people and the culture. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to learn about him. Through his column, you can learn so much about his outlook on life and his political stances. For somebody described as so private, he was surprisingly open in the paper. I learned he was staunchly anti-fascist and anti-Nazi. And he waxed poetic about the state of America and the American people. He valued honesty, integrity, intelligence, and thinking for oneself. He loved his town and spoke at length about the ways he thought it should grow and thrive. His thoughts on preservation are much like my own, not resisting change, but looking for ways to honor the past and carry forth what made his town special and unique. I think his time at the newspaper was really meaningful to him. In his farewell address, he said, Time and change overcome all things, and time and change and circumstance have caught up with the leisurely gait of an amateur columnist in your town paper. David Manners preferred stage to film, since it gave him the opportunity to act out a whole narrative instead of film where he would tell snippets of a story out of order. In the 1940s, he performed in a few Broadway shows, and in 1948, he began a relationship with playwright Frederick William Mercer. After David Manners retired from acting in 1953, the two moved to the Pacific Palisades until Mercer's death in 1978. David Manners spent his later years painting and writing and studying philosophy. In 1971, he published a book called Looking Through, an evidence of self-discovery. On December 23rd, 1998, David Manners passed away at 98 years old. 98 is a significant life and David Manners considered every day a blessing. It's amazing to think that in just a few years, David Manners was in some of the biggest movies of the 1930s, and his exit from Hollywood was just as abrupt as his entry. I have to imagine that it was tough to be gay in Hollywood in those days, especially as the Hays Code was starting to be enforced and his very identity was under attack. I respect that he did everything he could to protect his inner and outer peace. And that brings me to the rumors of why his star was removed from the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Some people say it had to do with his self-imposed exile from Hollywood. Others say it's because he was gay. But the simple answer is that he never had a star on the Walk of Fame. The Walk of Fame was implemented a few years after he retired, when it really wouldn't have been so much of a barrier if he were gay. But by that time, he just wasn't on people's shortlist anymore. And if I'm being honest, I'm probably happy that he just didn't have a star versus it being removed for one of those other reasons. And in all honesty, I'm not even sure he would have wanted a star on the Walk of Fame. Let me know in the comments your favorite David Manners roles. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. Join the Lemley family through YouTube memberships or Patreon for bonus content. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.